So before we dive into what's been done to the chassis and bodywork, let's have a quick look at the car when I first picked it up, when it was just a few years old, pretty much factory, and with its wheels fitting inside the arches with plenty of room. Move forward some years and on went a set of Bowler B7 wheels with an 8.5J offset and a higher profile and very meaty track tyre which did a fantastic job, even on road tyres, of improving turning speed and once coupled with an automatic torque biasing LSD vastly improved exit speed too. However, this did give me quite a major issue with arch rubbing, particularly with the track tyres feared as they come up really wide. I looked at some different options such as cutting the arches and fitting over arches, even the S2000 rally car wings and bumpers, however they would have come up too wide and too high. So I opted to roll and where necessary cut and flare the arches to get as much width as I could. This photo shows a before and after of the rear, and in fact I've gone even wider since then. It did make a massive difference. I do still get a tiny rub when dropping into Paddock Hill at Brands, but anyone who's ever done that corner would know exactly how harsh it is, so it's pretty much to be expected. You can see quite clearly from here that we've cut out the uh, the kind of the bumper mounts that sat in here because they were the closest point where the wheels would rub the arches. Um, so instead we've got a rivet nut through there and the bumper mounts now just literally straight through the side of the bumper. Um, yeah, that combined with obviously rolled in these arches. So rolled the arches in to get rid of the lip and then flared them out, out as far as we can. So you don't really notice it so much kind of looking at it like this. But if you look down from above, you really see how much wider those arches are. Pretty gained about an inch um, particularly on the rears they pulled out really nicely problems with the fronts is you can only pull so far before you start kind of pulling against these plastic mounts you kind of have to keep quite a lot of pressure on them as you're as you're pulling but yeah sort of a gradual process and it it does widen out quite nicely um worst point for catching was all around this front area so i've widened the front even further than the rest of the arch and then uh, likewise the bumper I flared kind of the plastic so we managed to heat the plastic up and flare that out to meet up with that now. A spacer was designed and printed in carbon infused plastic then the bumper is fastened externally using a flush bolt and washer. Shock absorbers were something that I did quite early on, starting with the front to gain better traction under accelerations, it really did used to spin up quite badly before, then upgrading the rears to match, making the car stiff all round and reducing body roll. A front lower strut brace and at the time a rear strut brace were added to stiffen the car up even more. Later down the line, poly bushes were fitted to really stiffen everything up and make the car more planted and precise, also giving the ability to adjust the caster angles. And a Vibrotechnics rear gearbox mount was fitted and the rear strut brace was swapped out for a rear cage in lightweight T45. In terms of brakes, the standard brake calipers weren't terrible. In fact, with just braided lines and high temp fluid, they probably would have been quite suitable for track use. But I figured that Brembo 4 pots were the way to go for getting their lap times down. And so a brand new set of effectively coarser E1s were ordered from Courtney Sport, along with braided lines and high temp fluid. In terms of aerodynamics, there's nothing more than a smooth Nürburgring front splitter, and the bonnet's been vented to allow air to escape and hopefully push the car down a little bit. There's also holes in the rear bumper, along with the vents opened up to allow air to escape and to some extent push the rear of the car down. It obviously has the standard VXR rear spoiler, which probably has a marginal amount of downforce. I did toy with the idea of an adjustable rear spoiler, but it doesn't feel like it really needs it. And I'm conscious that adding aero to the rear could then imbalance the front. As for weight distribution, at the front you'll note a lightweight fiberglass bonnet, purposely unpainted. Its white coat is best for heat dissipation, and painting it would only add weight, albeit very marginal. This allows me to reduce weight of the heaviest part of the car, where the engine is. I've purposely retained the metal boot lid as to retain weight at the very back of the car. This will help with front and rear distribution as the back of the car is already very light owing to the removal of the rear seats, etc. As already mentioned, I opted for a rear cage constructed from T45. This material is stronger than the standard ROPT tube, so a lesser diameter can be used to keep weight to a minimum. This increases safety and chassis strength without adding more weight to the front of the car. Lightweight windows, again, reduce a bit of weight and help keep the centre of gravity as low as possible as the weight's being removed from the top of the car. This is also reducing weight from where the driver and passenger are sat and are shatterproof. 
I'm not going for the boy racer look, nor am I trying to mimic the aero of a time attack car. In fact, too much aero would simply cause unwanted drag. So everything you see here is functional. That said, I wanted it to have some flair, as I felt that all my hard work was going very unnoticed, and as the modified car world seems obsessed with city wheels and stickers, I thought, if you can't beat them, join them. Luckily, I have a designer on hand, and so we come up with these graphics which give a gentle nod to Vauxhall's BTCC history, and fit in well with the white bonnet and yellow details. So for the summary, we've got the Bilstein gas shocks with the original VXR springs, the Forge lower front strut brace, Powerflex Road Series Poly Bush Kit, Vibrotechnics rear gearbox mount, Bowler B7 wheels, Yokohama Advan AD08 RS tyres, Brembo 4 pot front calipers, 330mm discs, Brembo HP2000 fast road pads, front control arm mounted brake cooling ducts which we saw in the cooling video, front and rear brake dust covers removed, Courtney Sport braided lines, Miller's Motorsport racing brake fluid. So that's all the chassis stuff, and then in terms of bodywork, we've got the BTCC inspired livery, the fiberglass bonnet, with Focus RS style bonnet vents and aero catches fitted, the Nurburg ring front splitter, Perspex windows with sliders, the front arches rolled and flared, bumper mount cut out and a new mounting made, rear arches flared and inner arches cut back, we've got the cold air feed which we saw in the engine video, and the brake cooling ducts and the mesh lower front grille which we saw in the cooling video. Then we've got the rear wiper delete, rear bumper vents opened and additional vents added into the number plate recess. Got a Sparco toe strap which is really important. If you come off on a track day they drag the car out of the gravel however they can. And then something actually non-functional, a pair of tinted side repeaters.